The development of head and face is a bit tough subject to understand for many students. The pharyngeal arches, the pharyngeal cleft and the pharyngeal pouch is a cornerstone or the foundation of the development of head and face. So let us make it simple and easy to study. At third week of embryonic development, the human blastocyst is transformed into a trilaminar disc or three layer disc by a process called gastrulation. The trilaminar disc is having three primary germ layers that is the outermost ectoderm, the innermost endoderm and mesoderm in between and this never looked like a human baby. In this trilaminar disc you can see two membranes one is at the cranial end which is called the oropharyngeal membrane and towards the caudal end there is a cloacal membrane. But we are uh, here we are only concerned about the cranial end and the oropharyngeal membrane. So at the site of this membrane the endoderm is fused with the ectoderm with no mesoderm in between. So that is a trilam bilaminar structure only two layers and this oropharyngeal membrane is a future stomodium or the primordium or future mouth of the baby. And at uh, starting from the fourth week, this trilaminar disc undergo folding to form a tube-like structure. So it folds transversely and also craniocordally. The first two pictures are the transverse folding and the lower one uh, is uh, folding at the cranial end and also uh, at from the caudal end. So this uh, disc folds transversely and craniocordally so that the disc is changed into a closed tube like structure with three cylinders which are nested inside one another. So the outermost ectoderm, the innermost endoderm and also in between the uh, mesoderms. So in the cut section it will be like this like uh, uh, you can see all the three layers again and also oropharyngeal membrane which uh, came ventrally. Uh, where the only the ectoderm is seen on, from the outside but there is also the mesoderm and endoderm in, uh, inner to the ectoderm. And again this embryo become curved cranially and caudally and towards the start of fourth week in the ectoderm the neural plate is formed um, which differentiates into neural tube and the neural crust cells. Okay. So this is a cut section and in this uh, cut section you can see the oropharyngeal membrane, the cloacal membrane and also start of development of the neural tube. And the neural tube develops into brain and the spinal cord and this neural crust cells migrate from the neural tube cell to many differentiating structures and the cell types. And here you can see the neural tube bulging in the cranial end so it makes the ectoderm and the mesoderm to protrude forward and the swelling that is externally visible is called the frontonasal process okay so because of the forebrain swelling the ectoderm bulges outward to form the frontonasal prominence which contributes to the development of face which i will explain later and this frontonasal swelling is an unpaired swelling okay so the for because of the forebrain swelling the ectoderm bulges out to form the frontonasal prominence. And as the neural tube is formed, there are bulges on the lateral surface of the embryonic head and which are called the pharyngeal arches. So just caudal to the frontonasal process, there is a first arch which is again subdivided into two parts which is a maxillary process and the mandibular process. And this maxillary process surrounds the oropharyngeal membrane. And caudal to this, there is a second, third and the fourth arch and then caudal to the that is the sixth arch. So in human embryo, the fifth arch is not formed or it is rudimentary. So there are five arches. Okay. So in this, uh, understand that just caudal to the frontonasal process, the first arch is formed, which is subdivided into two parts, which is a maxillary process and the mandibular process. And this maxillary process surrounds the or a pharyngeal membrane and caudal to that is a second, third, fourth and the sixth arch. 
and in human the fifth arch is not formed or it is rudimentary and in this cut section you can at the level of the uh, ectoderm you can see the neural tube also and the external is a pharyngeal ectodermal cleft and this um, pharyngeal endoderm that is a uh, yellow colored in this uh, diagram the pharyngeal endoderm extends as out pouchings and they are forming the pharyngeal pouches okay and there are four pouches and externally there are four pharyngeal grooves so the ectodermal uh, pharyngeal cleft and the endodermal pharyngeal pouch and this mesoderm forms the arch okay so here uh, the lower one is the electron microscopy picture which shows very clearly the frontonasal process along with the uh, pharyngeal arches and uh, the above one the cut section you can very clearly see that is the pharyngeal endoderm extending out outwards out pouchings uh, as the pharyngeal pouches so the external pharyngeal cleft then comes a pharyngeal arch which is a mesoderm and then the inside there is the uh, endoderm uh, pharyngeal uh, pouch also okay so in each pharyngeal arch it, it has got its own uh, art artery the uh, nerve supply then the muscular component then the skeletal component uh, of each arch okay so this is the basic concept which is the pharyngeal cleft the pharyngeal arch and the pharyngeal pouch and this is the electron microscopy of the human embryo in that also the towards the uh, cranial end you can see the frontonasal process with the developing pharyngeal arches there are five arches then four pouches and four pharyngeal cleft here also uh, the cranial end is clearly seen with the frontonasal process then the first arch subdivided into maxillary and mandibular process and also the uh, other arches which is caudal to that so the development of head and neck begins in fourth week and it uh, extends the growth of the mesenchymal tissue that is a connective tissue in the cranial region of the embryo forms arches separated by cleft so and also the number of out pocketing appear on the lateral wall of pharynx which is called the pharyngeal pouches and the pouches are endodermal and uh, cleft or the external one are ectodermal okay and this also again shows the uh, arches which is the first second third fourth and the sixth arch and cleft which are four in number and also pouch which are four in number okay and each arch as i already told it has got its own nervous uh, then the uh, vascular component the nervous component muscular component and also the skeletal component which is developing into various structures in life and first we can uh, describe i'll describe about the pharyngeal cleft so the first pharyngeal cleft for, uh, forms the epithelium of the external auditory meatus okay first pharyngeal cleft forming the adult external auditory meatus here you can see lateral to the um, first pharyngeal arch there is um, pharyngeal cleft which is later uh, forming the external auditory meatus and the second third and the fourth cleft will organize and they give rise to cervical sinuses so the first pharyngeal cleft uh, forming the adult external auditory meatus and the second third and the fourth cleft will organizing and giving rise to cervical sinuses okay in the below diagram you can see the pharyngeal cleft and also the pharyngeal pouch and this pharyngeal pouch will develop from week 4 through week uh, through 10th week okay so again once more uh, showing the frontonasal process then the nasal placard developing that we will discuss again on development of face then the um, stomodium 
and surrounding that is a maxillary uh, prominence and then the mandibular and also the first brachial cleft which is developing into an external auditory canal. Once more describing because this is very important thing and this forms the basis of development of head and neck. So the first cleft going for external auditory meatus, the second, third and the uh, fourth cleftal organizing and giving rise to cervical sinuses. And of the uh, pharyngeal pouches, the first pouch endoderm develops into tubo tympanic recess and later developing into tympanic cavity and also the auditory tube or the uh, eustachian tube. And the second pouch will contribute to the formation of palatine tonsil epithelium. And the third pharyngeal pouch will split into a ventral portion and a dorsal portion. This dorsal portion later forms the inferior parathyroid gland and also the pyriform fossa. And the ventral portion develops into thymus. The failure of uh, development lead to accessory or ectopic. It's not accessory. Failure of development or descent lead to ectopic um, glands. And again, the fourth pouches got a dorsal part and a ventral part. From the dorsal part, the superior parathyroid gland and from the ventral part for, uh, comes the ultimobranchial body which give rise to parafollicular cells or the C cells of the thyroid gland which are responsible for the secretion of calcitonin which regulates the calcium pathway. Okay, so we discussed about the uh, basic development of the pharyngeal arch then the pharyngeal cleft the developing into the first one developing into external artery canal and the other one forming the cervical sinuses and also the pharyngeal pouches which are four in number and the structures developing from each now we will go to the development of uh, face and also the structures developing from each pharyngeal arch